oven roasted trout with creamy lemon farro. Eating fish and seafood more often is another important way of eating the, Mediter uh, eating the Mediterranean way. And it's replacing the red and processed meats with fish two to three times a week. Um, and this supports our cancer prevention guidelines that also recommend that we cut back on our red meat and processed meats. And if we look at the classical anti-inflammatory diet by Dr. Andrew Wheel, it also included uh, fish. It was uh, considered to be more of a pescatarian diet, where pescatarian meaning that you're mostly vegetarian, but you still have some fish. Um, with that said, though, we don't want you to worry if you don't eat fish or you can eat fish, because um, just focus on the other healthful foods we're talking about today. And it's all about building your own healthful plan. Over to you, Jeremy. Wonderful. OK, so we're making, like Daniela mentioned, a really nice uh, fish dish with a farro grain. And, and uh, farro is one of our, our favorite whole grains to, to use. I'm going to get that to that in a second. But first, let's start off with the fish, which is a um, very simple preparation. Just looking for my pen. So we're using some trout. Um, this is uh, just some rainbow trout. Um, you, but I mean, you can use any fish with this. Uh, obviously, and we're, we're just doing a very, very simple oven uh, roasted uh, preparation for this trout. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of Dijon on top. So this is not something I, use, I typically do, but I love that little bit of sort of, we'll call it zip, for, for lack of a better culinary term. Um, it, it's not overpowering. And as it cooks, it sort of, you know, it heats up, it sort of, that heat or that overpowering nature of, of Dijon that you might experience, it uh, mellows out quite a bit, um, but you get this really, really nice little punch of flavor. Um, and what I like about this as well is it almost acts as like a food glue. So if you wanted to sprinkle it with some like pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds or like chopped almonds to give this, give it like a really nice sort of crust or crunch on top, you can do that and it would stick right to the top, which is great. Um, I'm going to just keep it very, very simple. I have to have some parsley. That will stick to the top as well. Make it nice and pretty. Um, and that's pretty much it. Nothing too difficult. Um, and I'm going to throw it on, obviously, a baking pan or baking tray, whatever you have. Um, this is just a small piece, so I'm just using this little baking dish. And another little tip to sort of save on the cleanup um, you know, one of the earlier presentations today uh, was a wonderful uh, presentation by Manisha talking about cancer-related fatigue. Um, and one of our little cooking tips for cancer-related fatigue is, you know, trying to minimize the amount of cleanup, uh, you know, necessary or required in the kitchen. So we love using these like parchment sheets uh, to sort of save that mess on that baking dish, uh, so you don't have to worry about scrubbing that after. Um, and if you are using it on a flat pen you know makes it really easy for you. you can just lay it across but if you have a deep dish uh, or a pan with like a depth or a baking dish with a, with a depth to it what i like to do is just run it under some water just a little bit and crunch it up and make it all like a little paper ball then so i crunch it up and then unravel it and it becomes very, very malleable at this point. And so if you're making, it's nice, even if you're making like a dessert or like a little crumble or something, you can save the cleanup by using that little parchment trick. And then we're going to throw a piece of fish on top. Okay, that's gonna go into the oven. Uh, 400 degrees. Uh, for about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, every oven is a little bit different. You want to cook it until it flakes apart really easily. Um, so about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, general rule of thumb is 10 to 15 minutes for every inch thickness. Um, and then you can sort of adjust uh, depending on your oven. Okay, so that's going to go in the oven. And while that's roasting, we'll prepare the rest of our ingredients. Now, 
I guess the main part of this recipe is fado. No, fado um, is the sort of wheat, the wheat kernel like this. But it is, uh, Danielle, it's considered a whole grain, right? It's considered a whole grain. Um, actually, one fourth cup provides five grams of fiber. So, um, and it also has a great source of protein and, and zinc. So it's very good. Um, and then the preparation, fairly simple. Bring a pot of water, cold water to a boil, um, and then you can um, add your fado in it. And what I do is I just cook it until it's tender. Um, so if I want something that's super soft, I'll continue cooking it until it's nice and soft. If I want it to have a little bit more bite, like almost like an al dente uh, bite to it, uh, if I'm going to throw it in salads, for example, then just cook it in, until it's that consistency. Um, so instead of like a, a ratio to follow, add it to boiling water like you're cooking pasta and then cook it until it's um, tender uh, to the consistency that you like. Um, what I love about these whole grains, and this is a nice little meal prep tip, is cook more than you're going to need for that dish um, because, again, this stores really, really well. So I'll cook maybe a cup, two cups, um, because it'll yield more. Um, and then that cooked grain, and put it in the refrigerator, um, put it in a Tupperware, put it in the refrigerator. If you're going to use it over the next three or four days, or you can freeze this as well. Freeze, freezing is a tool, or the freezer is a tool that we love to use because it's, it's a great way to um, you know, store some of those cooked items and just save you time in, in some of those you know, future uh, days where you just don't have the energy or time to cook. So great way to cook in advance, store or freeze in the fridge, and then we can use in dishes like uh, this one. So. Yeah. Oh, just uh, yep. just about the whole grains. Um, again, that's a plant food, right? And we talk about increasing our fiber intake, and there's many reasons for that. And the most recent reason is because of our gut health, um, and the gut health and its connection to our brain health and to our immunity. So the fiber. I mean, we've all heard of probiotics, um, which are the active um, health. Uh, useful bacteria, beneficial bacteria, but adding fiber, the fiber is actually not only helping us, it's also helping to feed the good bacteria, the beneficial bacteria in our gut so that they can work against um, the chronic inflammation and work to support the immune system. So we're learning a lot about fiber and how it you know, helps with blood sugar control, helps uh, with digestion, you could almost call it nature's broom and natural detoxification of our system. Love it. All right, so we're gonna get started with this creamy fado dish. Uh, I've got a saute pan, a little bit of a, a thicker or deeper uh, saute pan here. A little bit of olive oil, or you can use grapeseed oil, um, and medium heat, uh, nothing too aggressive. And I'll start off with some garlic. So I crushed this about a few minutes ago. Um, and you can even just throw it in a hole. I'm going to throw it in a little bit thinner. So just thinly sliced. And there's a, a method to Jeremy's madness. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, that's because cutting, chopping the garlic ahead of time, um, at least for 10 minutes, allows the uh, enzyme to that's released in the from the crushing and chopping to develop the allicin antioxidant, an important antioxidant. And then when it's put into the heat in the uh, hot oil, um, that antioxidant um, does not disappear, it remains. But if you were to put the chopped garlic in before allowing it to sit for 10 minutes, that antioxidant would not have been developed. And Daniela, that principle applies to onion as well, correct? It applies to onion. Anything from the allium family, so like your shallots, your onions, um, your scallions, right? And uh, yeah, your garlic. 
So we've got that garlic in there. I have some chopped onion as well. And then we're going to add some zucchini and some eggplant. So I think when I think of the Mediterranean diet, I think tomato is one of the ones that pops up, and I think zucchini and eggplant are not too far behind in terms mm -hmm. of some really nice summer vegetables. So we're going to add some zucchini. Now you can chop it a little bit thicker. I, I went for something a little bit finer. Um, it's really up to you. Um, the only thing I would say is try to keep it consistent. So if you're going to go for a larger dice, just make sure that they're all a little bit of a larger dice. Or if you're going for a smaller cut, then make sure that they're all smaller cut. And that way they just cook evenly and they cook at about the same time. You can even do this to save you some time. And if your knife skills aren't you know, uh, the, the greatest, um, use a food processor uh, or like one of those food choppers. Uh, and what I do is, you know, you can prep that up in advance, pulse it all down, um, and then you have that prep to add to this. Also, something you can freeze. So I'm going to add all at once some diced zucchini and some eggplant. The advantage also of prepping it a little bit smaller is that it will cook uh, a lot faster as well. So we we just want it to soften. So at this size, it might take like five minutes or so. It won't take too much time. So we're going to stir that through. And I'll add a little pinch of salt at this point. Uh, and what that's going to do is going to help to draw out some of the water in the vegetables. Um, that's going to also help with the cooking. Much quicker. And each, like the zucchini and the eggplant, they both have what we call phytonutrients, but they have a different uh, profile. Um, so for the zucchini, you have more of the carotenoids. Um, in the eggplant, you have more of what's called anthocyanins, but they're both antioxidants and, and they both help to um, reduce the damage of just living um, what we call free radicals in our system. So they're, they're good to have in our diet and then they add more fiber. Now for the lemony part, we're using obviously a lemon, no surprises there, um, but we're going to use the zest and the juice of the lemon. And so we're going to start with the zest. And so what I'm using is a rasp here, or you might have heard it uh, referred to as a microplane, which is it's the more popular brand name of these rasp. But these sort of fine graters are great at um, removing the zest on the outside. Uh, they're also really good at mincing garlic. So you can take a garlic clove and if you want it really fine and minced, you can kind of run it through there. Or ginger as well. If you want to do a nice little ginger mince, you kind of run it through there. So really great tool to use. And now we have that zest of the lemon, which is going to provide just an immense sort of explosion of lemon. Um, and all those essential lemon oils are in that zest, that outer skin of your lemon. Um, and so this is what, I mean, I remember baking when something was baking usually around the house and you get that nice little hit of lemon in the, uh, in the air. That's usually because of the lemon zest uh, in, the, in the recipe. So it's going to do the same thing in some of these savory dishes. Really, really nice punch of lemon in that. And I'm only going with the lemon zest. The juice, I'm going to save for the end. If I added the juice too early, um, you're going to lose a lot of that really sort of vibrant um, intensity, that brightness that you get from, from like the citrus lemon juice. So lemon, uh, limes, oranges, if you're cooking with them. Just anticipate if you add it too early, um, it's going to it's going to mute the flavors a little bit. So I always save it for the end to, to add a really brightness, a really freshness. Okay, so you can see what we're doing here, just softening. 
the zucchini and the eggplants. And once it's nice and soft, so you're going to, I don't want to cook into a mush, but you can try a piece of the zucchini. Once it's nice and tender, you can go ahead and add your, your grains. Now this could be any grains, like we're using fado today, but you know, like what are some other, I guess, whole grain options that, you know, we could use or that would be a beneficial part of the Mediterranean well, diet? Yeah, so for whole grain, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you could also use quinoa or brown rice or the whole wheat couscous. Um, but then on, on the flip side, if you are introducing some fiber but don't want a lot, um, if you're just recovering from treatment, you can still go with the um, the, re the refined grains. But because we are talking about uh, the Mediterranean diet and also um, looking at anti-inflammatory properties, the whole grains is why is why we're talking about that today. And farro is great, uh, quinoa as well, brown rice, um, the whole wheat couscous. There are several options. Okay, so that is the cooked farro in, uh, and if your grain is already cooked, then uh, it doesn't really take much time at this point. Uh, so we have a really nice medley of vegetables, with those zucchini and eggplants, the fado is in there, it's incorporated. Uh, and now at this point, we're going to finish it off. So you can add a little bit of water to keep it simple. If you have some stock or broth, you can go ahead and add that as well. Um, I still have some of that bean broth here, actually. So that's what I'm going to use. And want about a cup and a half just until it's almost has like that porridge or like a risotto consistency. Stir that through. And even being in here for a minute, sort of simmering with that liquid is going to create this really, really nice creaminess with uh, some of that starch coming off of the fado. And this is when I'll add my lemon juice to finish, take it off the heat. And you can taste it. I'm gonna add, this is a pretty juicy lemon, so I'm just gonna go with half. But if you like a little bit more, you can add more. And we will add just a little bit, maybe a little bit of parsley on top. You can add basil too, that would be really nice. And it's a plate. So, Let's try to get our lighting looking good here. Beautiful. Okay. So we're going to add. Where's my spoon? Oh, my spoon. Again, season to taste at that point. But I don't want it to be too soupy because it's not a soup. But it should have a little bit of that wave to it. Maybe I just I realized. You're using a Mediterranean blue plate. <laughs> yes. And the picture in my background is Greece as well. So it's almost like we really planned today. So. Uh, is ready. I did one beforehand. Didn't magically change baking plates. But again, at that 400 degrees, a little bit of that. Higher heat is going to get some really, really nice sort of caramelization and crust on that trout. We'll place that on top. And there we go. There's our oven roasted trout with our lemon, creamy lemon, fado. <laughs>